Hey guys, so I really wanted to talk again about the Kaloon experiment. I know I just rec recorded a video about it moments ago, but I wanted one that wasn't so long with all the reading and stuff. So that's the thing. Um, and if you haven't watched my previous video, um, there was a study uh, from a behavioral psychiatrist done on rats um, that tried to explain um, the effect of population, population density and overpopulation on uh, society and the mind. Now, the thing with that study is that the variables that he manipulated, um, I think, impacted the experiment. Uh, the goal was to study overpopulation, but the little environments he created never reached the peak, peak population even. Um, and it's really sad because these studies provide invaluable information. Uh, so, uh, he created several experiments, but the most famous is the 25th experiment. In that experiment, um, he built a pen, a pen, um, in a, in a pool kind of thing, with several little apartments uh, equally distributed to where rats could choose, and I think some the the ones he called the beautiful ones tend to go in higher apartments and far from the population, and the most rats tend to use to to go to one part of the pen. Another thing I, f I think he forgot to mention is that it's two couples of rats, so I think consanguinity could have impacted it as well. And I don't think I mentioned this in my previous video, but these studies are fascinating because the rats had equality, equity, if we will, um, which is basically what uh, people advocate nowadays, and they say that we can't succeed without um, all these socialist ideas and principles uh, that uh, society isn't perfect and we cannot succeed and we're miserable because we lack this and we lack that and um, so um, they try to implement all these socialist ideas end up failing and uh, we can see uh, how society is getting worse and worse and uh, the thing is when you don't have um, to work for things when you don't have a strive in life eventually you will develop all these behavioral problems that was seen in that rat study, but I probably should explain it better. So, the rats were predator-free, they had apartments, they had nesting areas, and they were provided food across different points and water always available. Now, despite having everything they could ever ask for and need, um, they chose to cluster in one area and only eat from that one area and drink from that one area and the outskirts, you know, um, they didn't eat from other places. They liked to eat commun communally. Um, and... Uh, 
the majority of apartments were unoccupied and they chose specific places to live at depending on their um, places in society. Now, despite equity and, um, and uh, everyone had the same resources, behavioral um, shifts occurred after a few hundred days and um, the animals started behaving erratically. Now, while the study tries to make a point that this is due to overcrowding and population density, uh, the bad behaviors emerged long before uh, it even reached the, the full capacity. I think they, they were about 100 to 200 individuals when the problem started developing and the worst problems developed around when they were around 500 individuals. And uh, so these things developed even prior to uh, critical occupation rates um, uh, happened. In fact, it never reached the full, the full um, capacity of uh, the, um, the, the housing, if we will. Um, I think there were around, around 2,200 uh, at the peak of the population density. And so they had plenty of space. Space wasn't an issue. And um, I think that that's the flaw in this study is they don't, the, the variable that they thought would actually increase population growth was actually the cause of the demise of the population. So at about a hundred and or so days, they started to develop the structure um, and division. You had uh, the the rats and mice that uh, Kaloon called the beautiful ones going uh, their own way. Uh, you could. Uh, compare them to the Megtows, and um, these animals uh, stopped engaging in society, decided to reside in apartments further from the general population, didn't engage in sexual behavior, they spent the day grooming themselves, and uh, they were overall not involved in fights and the fact and why they called them the beautiful ones. They looked uh, unblemished and uh, overall the healthiest rats in the, the group. Um, these animals were essentially outliers and so we're able to escape the major behavior shift in other rats. And then you had the alpha males. Now the alpha males became extremely violent and they would rape and mate with male and female. And um, they would compete uh, for food and Essentially, they were the ones involved mostly with the females. Um, and uh, then you had the females, which also uh, developed bad behavior, abortive kind of behavior, not caring for their young, and uh, overall dismissing males 
And uh, that, that, that's one of the major issues. And you had the beta males, which would also, um, you know, be victims of violence and uh, devious behavior. Now, aside from uh, uh, the beautiful ones that didn't engage in any kind of sexual behavior, um, all the other rats were actually sexually active, but they um, acquired deviant sexual behaviors, non-reproductive sexual behaviors uh, with either the same sex or the opposite sex, but essentially they would they wouldn't strive for reproduction and those that got pregnant didn't care for their young and the males would let, let the females and they didn't care for their young together. Neither would the females. And uh, at some point they developed more aggression and um, cannibalistic behavior. Uh, the females would attack their young and wouldn't care for them. Um, you had females that had litters and completely abandoned them. Females that moved their litters and left half of it halfway or would just drop their litters and um, not even care about it. And um, so essentially sexual deviancy not caring for young, and uh, despite uh, having food all over the place, they chose to cluster in a particular area. Um, this is actually fascinating because you can draw parallels to what is happening in our world and the consequences of uh, a welfare state and socialism and communism uh, in that study, which is really a shame because it's such a lost opportunity uh, that uh, the author of the study didn't see that what was causing that societal collapse was not just the population clusters and overpopulation as he calls it, but rather the fact that um, socialism, of course, uh, he noticed actually that the lack of uh, uh, predators and uh, um, strive for work for uh, your own sustenance did impact them. But I think there's a, a connection missing. They, they forget that this is happening in not our societies. We have socialism, and the worst aspect of socialism is that unlike those rats that had no consequences of socialism, we do have consequences of socialism. Because, let's face it, that welfare isn't free. That uh, the fact that everything is communal has consequences. Because if you don't have private property, if you don't have competition, capitalism, essentially the market is dead, the drive for competition is dead, and um, there is no progress. Because even if ca that socialism doesn't impact everyone, Let's see, if there's equity for everyone, there is no strive to create. There is no strive to outdo yourself because, let's face it, if I have a company, I create value, but I'm being heavily taxed because what's-his-name needs welfare and support then why even bother working and creating a company? Because the more I have, the more I'm taxed on. 
And the same thing can be sa- said for someone on net welfare. Because the more they, the less they work, the more they are given. So this drives you to not work, either because no matter how much you work, you're not getting any further, but also no matter how little you work, you're always provided for. And this creates stagnation. But... Again, you still need to pay the consequences for the free food. There is taxation. So, in reality, without that God giving you the food, um, you have to pay for that. So, in moments where everyone has everything, everyone has food, But when that food runs out, everyone is miserable. That's the problem with socialism. And, um, but then again, it doesn't say that on the study. So I will stick to things on the study. Um, The population of rats uh, eventually dwindled to a few members and died out without reproductive behavior. And we can see this happening. You see, in Japan, there are less and less kids. Uh, And in Russia, I saw an article two days ago, I think, saying that young people have no sex drives. They're changing everything for phones. Um, So you see, this is happening everywhere. And we need to be careful about it. Um... And we have parallels to this rat study. We can see how nowadays uh, women are changing. Uh, We are telling women that the career is more important than family. And, um, you know, uh, traveling is more important than marrying. And men can have sex without marriage. So why bother? And so all aspects of society are, you know, being messed up. So we are reducing the reproductive drive. We are reducing the productive, the production of um, goods and everything. And um, yes, this is also uh, a result of capitalism in in a sense, because these big corporations that uh, now uh, own everything and because uh, there is uh, monopolies, essentially we are getting to a point where we are getting uh, socialism because there's one individual that owns everything and buys everything from everyone So, essentially, we are being led to the the point where um, capitalism is being replaced by corporativism. That is essentially a a, um, an industry version of socialism, and it's really scary. Uh, Now, Kaloon, who made the study, did remove certain individuals that uh, were from uh, one of a few of the beautiful ones from those rat studies and uh, even while the other rat populations were healthy those individuals that were rescued from those models did never fully integrate into society and were never productive members of society so essentially we're getting to a point where we are no longer capable of escaping this sorry there's cat food there and she's attacking the cat food bag uh so (laughs) um atena tu tens ali she has her bowl, but she prefers the one that's in the bag, which is essentially the same, but go tell that. 
Uh, so essentially, welfare and all that is not be not um, bettering people. It's making it worse. Um, and the emergence of the MGTOWs, the the um, the new gender fight between men and women, binary, non-binary. All this is a result of this um, societal collapse that we are seeing. And it's a shame that they don't pay attention to these studies uh, because they could give you a glimpse at the results of socialism without actually having to suffer through it and doing something before it affects us, which already it has. Because essentially we replaced parenting with schooling and uh, work with family uh, love, um, which is kind of interesting because in, in essence we do have work, but we replace family. And those that do not have work and have welfare are replacing family with TV and children depending on dependent on schools. So every area that is socialized is because essentially when you think about the fact that children are going to school and spending more time at school than with their parents, this is a form of socialism. They're getting um, certain skills and they're not getting others. Um, we need to start fostering connection with parents and children and children learning from their parents. Now, of course, I like to study mathematics and physics, but um, how much are we sacrificing to learn? Because honestly, we could learn from our parents at, at home and have both ways, learn and still have that family bond. In the past, what happened was you had a father and he taught their children their occupation. And the children would, would learn with their parents and they had healthy relationships with family and society was growing. That's how we grew. But now we arrived at a point where um, technology is replacing most occupations and um, the state is replacing the parents. And because of all of this, we are developing more and more unhealthy behaviors. Um, uh, I have symptoms of ASD. Uh, and uh, this is one of the things that when you're raised at school uh, 10 hours a day, well, not 10 hours, but you know what I mean. And then you go home and uh, there isn't very much quality time with your parents. You don't uh, learn skills that are important. In fact, a lot of uh, behaviors like um, social behaviors, like talking, uh, are being delayed in the newer generations because kids don't spend as much time with their parents. If your child talk, if you talk to your child and your child spends quality time with you, um, they learn to speak properly and develop cer a certain set of skills that more and more uh, we are missing. So I maybe you know some asd aspects are caused a bit by the cons the kind of society where we are in and it's not necessarily a genetic behavior uh it's more part of the the environment we were raised in uh but then again uh i don't know i think in my case it's environment but uh we we never know um but the thing is, uh, the, the, the solution they see uh, to the 
current problems. Instead of reducing socialism, they're doing the opposite. They're increasing socialism, they're increasing welfare, they're increasing the... Um, uh, let's see, what did they... <sighs> what do you call them? Essentially, special status uh, and protected things like they're creating um, special scholarships for someone uh, of, um, let's see, let's pretend that I'm not a good student. Um, instead of trying to foster better education, they are trying to put good students in the same universities as students who are uh, not as good. Um, giving chances to people regardless of their results. And it shouldn't be like that. We should be rewarding pe people based on their hard work and intelligence in, and not by... Uh, I'm a woman, and so I have more rights than X because he is a man. I am uh, of um, mixed origin, so I have more rights than uh, a guy because he's Russian and blonde. So, you see, this is not conducive of improvement in society. We need that natural... Um, Essentially, equality of opportunity, not equality of outcome. And I think that's the biggest issue with this and um, socialism and welfare is that they're fostering this kind of environment. But at, in humans, it goes farther than that because the rats, they didn't have the, the things that we have like communal schooling and um, education at younger ages, I think it's really stunting our emotional development and our capacity for human relations. There was a point where you think that if I was taught and said they said that parents who homeschool are stunting their kids because they're not learning how to act around kids the same age. But it's not true because if you're homeschooled and spend more time with your parents, you can be homeschooled and then practice sports and meet tons of kids there. You can always play with the kids in the neighborhood. So that's a, one of the reasons I th think that our birth rates are decreasing and um, more and more and people are striving to live a wild life and then when they're barely you know capable of carrying a child or already almost infertile they decide to have kids or they decide to be a monoparental family you can see that all of these things are problems uh, derived from socialism. And uh, you can see that these also create the extreme right wing. And when I talk about socialism, I'm not just talking about leftist socialism. I'm talking about right wing socialism, because in case we didn't know, uh, there are socialists on the right-wing side, uh, but they have other ideologies, but they're still socialists in essence. And um, so feminism, gender identitarian things, um, sexism in terms of the MGTOW movement. And again, I can't blame the MGTOW movement, they're right about a lot of things. It's hard to have relationships in this day and age. 
people take advantage of each other and lie about each other, but their movement is not the answer either. It's a symptom of the illness of the system. We need a solution, and it's not it. We need to start with our kids because we're already in this corrupted society. And it's only getting worse. We need to evaluate things. And please do study Kaloon studies. Uh, I hope someone notices the correlation between socialism and his studies. Although I'm not holding my breath because everyone that analyzes the studies um, seems to think it's overpopulation. Um, which is sad because those are solid results and I wish someone could see what I see when we talk about communism and socialism and welfare in those studies. Um, I haven't read about them in months. Well, I read two articles now, but um, I would like to read something besides the... Uh, the studies themselves, and I would like to write about it, because it's a fascinating study, and I recommend everyone to read it, because it's a cautionary tale, and yes, it, it's, it really removes all hope we have of functioning of us as a society, but I do believe that if we raise our kids, knowing the results of our education, and explaining the issues uh, that arise from socialism, I think we can still save the next generation. Although most members of this generation are already doomed. But if we create a network of people raising kids to avoid this generation's issues, maybe there's still hope for humanity. Anyway, that's it for this video. Bye, and I'll see you in the next video. Please subscribe, like, comment, and tell me my, tell me, uh, my, um, whether my reasoning is correct, and what are your thoughts on those studies, or anything that I may have missed, and any thoughts you may have about the study. I, I, I really would like to, uh, encourage the debate about this, because this is really a fascinating one. Anyway. Bye, and I'll see you in the next video.